Thank you, Dr. Harry. And there is some question for you. The first one, in recent years, immunotherapy has revolutionized the change the treatment of many cancers and the prescription for immune checkpoint inhibitors are increasing. More and more patients with viral hepatitis may receive antiviral therapy before or during immunosuppression or immunomodulations. Could you please introduce the current common immune interventions and how do they interact with hepatitis viral? Yeah, there, there are two types of interventions, I would say. There are drugs that stimulate the immune system and there are drugs that suppress the immune system. And if I start with the latter, the, the immunosuppressive drugs, those are typically the drugs that uh, <clears throat> uh, are given in the field of oncology, like chemotherapy, those type of drugs, um, prednisone, um, imuran, those drugs that really um, suppress the immune system. There you really have to be afraid that uh, hepatitis B virus in particular, but also hepatitis C virus to a certain extent can um, increase in replication and then you can have re reactivation of these uh, diseases. Uh, and typically, if those diseases are, or if those drugs are very strong, so very strong immunosuppressive disease, then we treat patients with hepatitis B in particular um, with antiviral drugs to, to keep the viral load low and to prevent them from reactivating. The other group of drugs are uh, immuno, immunomodulatory or immunostimulatory drugs, rather, um, which is, for instance, a checkpoint inhibitor, as mentioned here. Those are really drugs that revitalize the immune system <clears throat> to, to treat cancers. And, and, and they, by itself, have other side effects. They give... Um, they give inflammation in specific organs, including the liver, uh, due to autoimmunity. So that could be a colitis, a hepatitis, a thyroiditis, a pneumonitis, all different types of uh, inflammations in specific organs. Now, if that happens into the liver, that is regardless of whether you have hepatitis B or C or not, these, these compounds really don't reactivate uh, the, the, the hepatitis B and C virus that much but they can give other liver problems in, in, in the form of autoimmunity. So in that sense, the, the immunosuppressive drugs really typically lead to a reactivation of the viruses. And for that reason, uh, inflammation of the liver and the hepatitis, whereas the checkpoint inhibitors or the immune stimulatory drugs give um, a hepatitis, which is regardless of the presence of hepatitis B or C. So in that sense, they're, they're, they're quite different and they interact with the liver in a different way. Okay, for the second one, uh, as we all know, hep hepatitis B viral can be reactivated in patients undergoing immunosuppression for cancer or non-cancer related diseases. And there, there is also a risk of re, uh, reactivation in patients who are treated with immune checkpoints inhibitors. For these chronic HPV, HPV patients who use uh, Im immunomodulators, how should we uh, monitor them and when should we intervene? Yeah, so it's, I already gave the answer to a certain extent for the first question. Um, it's, it's very difficult to tease out uh, whether immune uh, checkpoint inhibitor gives a reactivation of hepatitis B or whether it, it gives a flare like an ALT flare because of DILI, of the toxicity of the drug itself. So what we typically do is we look at the viral load, for instance, for hepatitis B very carefully uh, before treatment and during treatment with these checkpoint inhibitors. And um, if we see that the virus goes up together with the inflammation, it is indicative or at least suggestive of uh, hepatitis B or C reactivation due to the checkpoint inhibitor. But that's not... That is not always a very common phenomenon. Uh, the virus might even go down. I mean, checkpoint inhibitors are also used to treat hepatitis B and to try to get hepatitis B cured. 
so it's not necessarily that the virus would go up in most of these patients treated with checkpoint inhibitors. So checkpoint inhibitors are, for instance, given in patients with liver cancer who also have hepatitis B. And in like 10% of the patients, you see that S antigen loss would occur with, uh, with these checkpoint inhibitors. So the way to tease out whether this is a toxicity of the drug or reactivation of the virus is to measure the viruses before you start treatment and measure them again once you see that there's inflammation in the liver. And that, might, that likely will give you an answer whether it's a viral reactivation of the hepatitis, hepatitis B or C, or whether it's drug-induced liver injury just by the check, uh, checkpoint inhibitor itself. Okay, so for the last one, uh, generally speaking, how do we provide uh, treatment or prevention strategies for patients with viral hepatitis using the immunomodulators? Yeah, so the, the immune modulators, that's mainly the checkpoint inhibitors. I mean, I don't know if you're talking about the immunosuppressive agents uh, as well, but I, th I think I'll talk about both. For the immunosuppressive agents, it depends really on the strength of the immunosuppression. So if it's a very strong immunosuppressive drug, which particularly also affects the B cell, for instance, like anti-CD20 drugs like rituximab, uh, we give basically antiviral therapy against hepatitis B for all patients, even patients who have had hepatitis B in the past who are, are anti-HB core positive, but, but HBS antigen negative. So they, they don't have an active infection again uh, anymore, but these drugs are so strong that they really um, inhibit B cells in such a way that, that antibodies are disappearing and the disease comes back. Um, we also typically treat anti-HB core positive patients who are S antigen negative if they get very strong immune suppression, like very um, uh, highly immunosuppressive chemotherapy, high doses of prednisone beyond 40 milligrams. We treat all of those uh, to really prevent the disease from flaring up. Now, if you get just a tiny bit of immune suppression, like five milligrams of prednisone or, or a, a topic uh, uh, like, like um, delivery of, uh, of corticosteroids, for instance, we, we typically wait and we observe because there, and, and, and for low doses of Imaran and there's other like weak immunosuppressants, there the likelihood of relapse of the disease is very low. Um, if you do not have hepatitis B, but if you've had hepatitis B in the past, and we watch these patients and regularly measure HBS antigen or HBB DNA over time, and then if they become positive, we treat them. So it's really, it depends uh, on how active the disease is. If it is an infection in the past, we typically wait with weak immune suppression and we treat with very strong immune suppression. If it is an active hepatitis B, so patients are HBS antigen positive, um, then we have a much lower threshold and we treat almost all patients being treated with the immunosuppressive suppressant disease. Now with hepatitis C, it's a bit different because hepatitis C doesn't in integrate into the host genome. We try to cure these patients before they get um, treated with these type of comp uh, compounds. And um, there we could even treat patients during uh, immunosuppressive agents. So that, that, that is a bit more easy to treat, I would say. Okay, thank you so much.